Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have x plus 32 equals the fifth root of 2 minus x. And we're going to be solving for x values. So I'm going to show you the solution method and then we'll also take a look at the graph. So let's go ahead and set this equal to y. I'm going to use substitution, which is a very, very powerful method. And by setting both of these equal to y, we actually get two equations. So that's going to be like a system. Let's start with the radical. The fifth root of 2 minus x equals y. We're going to raise both sides to the fifth power. And that way, we're going to get rid of the fifth root. And this is going to give us 2 minus x equals y to the fifth power. Let's leave it at that and take a look at the other equation. And now we're going to find out how we put it together. So the second equation is going to come from here, x plus 32 equals y. x plus 32 equals y. Now, my original equation is in x, but I want to turn it into an equation in y, because that's going to be a lot easier to solve. So we're getting rid of the radicals, basically, here. How can I do that? Well, I do know that y to the fifth power is equal to 2 minus x, and x plus 32 to the x plus 32 equals y. Should I just raise this to the fifth power? We don't want to do that because that's going to make things more complicated. So here's what I want to do. I want to isolate the x from both of these equations and set them equal to each other. Make sense? So from the first equation, x becomes 2 minus y to the fifth power. Because if you just switch these around or add x to both sides and then subtract y to the fifth, that's what you get. From here, x becomes y minus 32. Fairly easy. You just subtract 32. Now we have two different values for x. We're going to set them equal to each other and then we're going to solve. And this is not just guess and check. I'll show you how we can get the solution um, directly. So let's go ahead and set them equal to each other. Let's write, I don't know which one uh, you want to write. I want to write the y minus 32 first and then set it equal to 2 minus y to the fifth power. And then I want to put everything on the left-hand side so that y to the fifth becomes positive. Make sense? So let's add y to the fifth and then write the plus y and then subtract 2. And what is that going to bring you? That's going to bring you 34. But you don't want to do that. Here's what we want to do. We want to write it as minus 32 minus 2. So don't subtract. Okay, don't simplify. Great. And this is equal to 0. Now, here's what we're going to do y to the fifth actually goes well with 32 because 32 is 2 to the fifth power and y to the fifth is a perfect fifth power. So they fit perfectly and y minus 2, those two terms are going to go together. Make sense? Okay, let's see how this plays out. So we're going to write it as y to the fifth minus 32 plus y minus 2 equals 0. I hope this makes sense. Now we're going to factor by grouping y to the fifth minus 32 is a difference of two fifth powers. So we're going to use a formula like this. a to the fifth minus b, b to the fifth is divisible by a minus b. And the other factor is going to be a to the fourth, a cubed b, plus a squared b squared, plus a b cubed, plus b to the fourth power. Pretty much the binomial theorem without the binomial coefficients. And this is very easy to prove. You just keep adding and subtracting, and that's what you're going to get. Okay, and if you want to check, you can distribute on the right-hand side, and that should give you a to the fifth minus b to the fifth. So by using that formula, we can go ahead and factor this into y minus 2 multiplied by y to the fourth plus y to the third times 2. So that's going to be 2y to the third. And notice that the signs are going to be all positive because this is a negative sign, so we don't have to worry about it, plus y to the second power, b to the second power, that is going to be 4y squared, plus a, which is y, times 2 cubed, that's 8y, and finally we're going to write 2 to the fourth power, which is positive 16. So that's how we can factor it, basically, plus y minus 2 equals 0. Now we have a common factor, and y minus 2 can be written as 1 times y minus 2, so now y minus 2 is a common factor, and then the other factor is going to be y to the fourth plus 2y cubed plus 4y squared. That's a weird 4. Plus 4y squared plus 8y 
plus 16 plus 1, that is going to give us, that is going to give us plus 17. So I'm just going to write it as plus 17 and the whole thing equal to 0. Again, this is not guess and check. We're basically uh, solving this equation by factoring it. And one of the factors is linear, so that's good. y minus 2, set it equal to 0, you get y equals 2. Remember, our goal is not to solve for y, but to solve for x, but we can back substitute. What happens to the other equation? This equation has four complex solutions, and I'll show you, when I show you the graph, we'll talk about it. Uh, I'll tell you why there's only one real solution to this equation. Okay, y equals 2 gives us what? y is... Let's see, let's try to find the relationship for y. So you can basically either use this or use that. I'm going to use the second one since that's linear. x equals y minus 32. x equals y minus 32. And since y is equal to 2 here, that is going to be negative 30. So in other words, the x value we're looking for equals negative 30. And if you actually plug that into the original equation, you're going to notice that it satisfies the original equation. So let's go ahead and plug it in and check our work and then we're going to take a look at the graph and I'll tell you why we have only one real solution. You probably already guessed that already. Okay, I used already twice anyways, never mind. So, if you plug in negative 30 on the left hand side, you get negative 30 plus 32, that gives you a positive 2. If you plug in negative 30 on the right hand side, inside the radical, you're going to get the fifth root of 2 minus negative 30, that is positive 32, the fifth root of 32, and that's equal to 2 again. So these equations basically agree, which means negative 30 satisfies the original equation. You don't have to worry about extraneous solutions here because this is a fifth power equation, so it has to have at least one real root. And plus, we didn't do like squaring both sides or anything crazy like that that would introduce extraneous solutions. So we're good x equals negative 30 is a solution, but let's talk about why that is the only real solution. If you want to find the complex solutions, you know, be my guest, you can go ahead and solve this quartic equation. You can use Wolfram Alpha or any other tool. I don't think you want to solve this using the quartic formula. It's going to be quite complicated and time consuming. Okay, anyways, nobody, almost, almost nobody uses the quartic formula. Maybe cubic is kind of fun, but Cortic is no fun. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up. So we have this following graph. It's kind of interesting. Notice that the blue one, the radical, is kind of like a graph that is always decreasing. Why is that happening? Because as x increases, 2 minus x is going to decrease and the fifth root of that is also going to decrease. Remember, the, negative, the fifth root of negative numbers are also negative. If 2 minus x decreases, the fifth root of 2 minus x decreases. In other words, this is always decreasing. And obviously, our linear function, the orange one, is always increasing. Therefore, those two functions are all only going to intersect at a single point, And that happens at x equals negative 30. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And actually, not tomorrow. I keep saying tomorrow because that's a habit. But anyways, I'll see you in a little bit. You know, uh, I think in about 15, 20 minutes. So I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.